discussing how to simulate a system that looks something like this. There is a model which models the world and this model essentially updates world state which is the state of the world. So for example the model might be a queuing model and the world state would tell us what is happening in the world, in this case the number of customers in the queue. Now the way the model updates the world state is due to events coming in and so the events cause the model to update the world state. Now what if we had the following, we were able to observe the world state and so we had some kind of observations and we use these observations to control the world to control events. So we would have this kind of a feedback loop where a controller would be sending events to the model and then is able to cause certain changes in the world and then can observe the impact of this. This of course results in a control system. And as you will, as you should remember from how the uh, how a system control a control system works. What we're showing over here is a simple feedback control system. And so, what I want to talk about briefly is how one would simulate such a feedback control system. And the way it works is really quite straightforward. Uh, what we would do is that we everything everything focuses on the events. So what we would do is uh, we would create an event which uses the model to update the world state and the when the world state updates then the result is sent back to the controller which compares the world state to the desired world state and uses the difference or the error to create new events which are control events and that impacts the model and so on so that that's how this would work now with a single controller actually this is not particularly interesting uh, in general, what we really have is a set of controllers. And let's call them C1, C2, etc. until let's say Cn. These are n controllers. And what these controllers are doing is they're all observing the same world state. And the interesting part is that each of them receives the feedback from the world state after a different delay. So the first controller may get it right after delay D1, the second controller gets it after delay D2, and in general, the nth controller will get it after a delay of Dn. Okay, so uh, the each controller is trying to update the same thing, which is the model of the world. And this model is going to update the world state. And each controller is essentially going to send events to this model, like so. And so all the events coming in, so this is the set of events, are coming into the model, which allows us to update the world state. And the interesting thing is that the world state is going to be uh, observed at different parts in time. To give you an example of this, let us say that the world state we're interested in is the state of a queue in the somewhere in the internet, state of a queue. So let me put a space in there, let's see. State of a queue. And what we want to do is to make each of these controllers essentially control the flow that is in is, is flow of packets into the queue. And what these delays correspond to is the observation delay, which is how far away the queue is from the source. This is the flow of packets from a source. And so we can think of as some source as being close to the uh, congested point, which is where the queue is and some further away. And so what will happen is that the flow of packets corresponds to events. So each packet that is sent is an event. And what the model does is on receiving a packet event, it just updates the queue by saying here is a new packet to be served. And whenever uh, the, the, the service is done, 
the state of the queue changes because now it has nothing to serve. And so the model essentially takes a set of packets coming in. So these are all the packets over here coming in and it uses them to update the state of the world, update the state of the queue. And the observation of the state of the queue is received by the controllers with different delays. And this, of course, you will recognize as the distributed flow control problem, a model of the distributed flow control problem uh, or distributed congestion control problem. And this is sort of one of the standard issues that one has to deal with in designing a packet network. So to summarize, when you're simulating a control system, we don't just have the world state and a model updating it, but instead we have to also simulate the action of the controllers and the events that are happening because of changes made to the world state by the controller. Now, notice that the world state over here is a single box, but in general, the world state itself could be all over the world. I mean, it literally could be around the world, in which case we would have an update coming in from the model. So here's an update. But this update would be received by this part of the world state over here. Let's call this world state one. Could be received right away. But the update to a different part of the world could be received after a, a different delay. And if you had some other part over here, WS3, then that update is going to be received after yet another delay over here. And so these updates from wherever the action is taken to the different parts of the world may itself take different point time, may different, itself take different amounts of delays before getting updated. So for example, you, if you have a database which is distributed and an update comes to one member of the database, then the distribution of that update to the other components of the database would be after some delays. And so the entire database would be, uh, would be synchronized to the new value only after some time, which of course leads to the problem of race conditions and so on. So again, these delays would need to be simulated in order to properly simulate a distributed world state. So if you're going from a simple world state to a more complex world state, that means you'll need a more complex simulation. But of course, this can be done.